To my beloved brethren and God's holy people across the globe, welcome to another program in the series, A Word to the Nation broadcast. I am Pastor Carol Wilson, your humble servant, and I encourage you to spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule and allow the Lord to speak to your hearts. Good morning and happy Sabbath to the household of faith and all those who are tuned in to this morning's broadcast. Today, November 6, is celebrated World IMC Day in the Churches of God's Seventh Day across the globe. The International Ministerial Congress, IMC, is the international arm of our church guided by three main objectives. Firstly, maintaining doctrinal unity of our churches around the globe. Secondly, to help facilitate the evangelistic mission of the IMC. And thirdly, to assist in organizing training and leadership meetings, aligning with our zone strategic plan. On the first Sabbath of every November, we seek to showcase the work of the IMC around the world, reminding ourselves of the role and responsibility of each member and to solicit a generous offering to assist the IMC in carrying out its mission for the ensuing year. There will be a 90-minute international Zoom conference this afternoon beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Jamaica time. I did send you the invitation and the Zoom ID a few days ago, but I will once again place it at the bottom of today's WhatsApp information. The theme of this year's celebration is continuing the mission of Jesus. And so I take the opportunity to share a word on this relevant topic. In order to continue the mission of Jesus, we first have to become acquainted with the mission, what it's all about. Secondly, we have to have our own experience of its transforming effects on our personal lives and then we will be in a position to continue the mission. Luke 4, 18 and 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This, in a nutshell, is the mission of Jesus. As he read in the synagogue this passage of scripture from the book of Isaiah, he sat down. Verse 20 and 21 says, And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. He began by saying to them, Today, as you listen, this scripture has been fulfilled. He was reading a prophecy about himself. His mission was through the anointing of the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel out to the poor. This would bring hope in a seemingly hopeless situation. He was sent to declare the release of the captive, those who have been bound by persecutors, by circumstances and situation, the recovery of sight to the blind, the retrieval of the ability to have a clear vision of what is happening around you and to set free those that are oppressed by natural and demonic forces 
to declare that this is the season of divine favor from the Lord. The mission of Jesus Christ is to bring hope to a world that is lost and dying, mortally wounded by the effects of sin. In a situation where mankind has been doomed to die, Jesus gave a sinless life to redeem us and give us new hope in him. There is another word that can be used to describe continuing the mission of Jesus Christ. And that word is discipleship. When Christ was on earth, he recruited disciples. A disciple is completely devoted to a teacher. The relationship goes beyond a student or an apprentice. They don't simply master a trade or a subject. They learn to emulate their teacher's life. As Christians, we become disciples striving to live according to the teachings of Jesus. Part of the activity of being a disciple of Jesus is making disciples. There might be several very different explanations of what making disciples look like and how to go about it. So what does the Bible say about discipleship? Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. As believers, we are commissioned to continue the mission of Jesus by following his example, making disciples. You therefore cannot sit idly by and do nothing. You cannot continue to give vain excuses why you are not doing the master's will. The task is great and the harvest field is wide. Mark 16 and verse 15 says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. The gospel must be preached across the entire world and God's will is that every cre created being must hear the gospel and so it is a part of your responsibility. Romans 10, 14 and 15 says, How then can they call on him they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. You cannot afford to continue to turn a blind eye to the call to continue the mission of Jesus. If you have been called by Jesus Christ to be his disciple, it means that you are also called to disciple others. Life for you might be challenging or difficult, that does not absolve you from the responsibility of discipleship, from continuing the mission of Jesus. If it is good news, that in itself should motivate you to want to share it. If you value your gift of redemption, you should be anxious to share your salvation with others so that they too can be saved. There's an old song that says, So send I you 
to labor unrewarded, to serve unpaid, unsought, unloved, unknown, to bear rebuke, to suffer scorn and scoffing, so send I you to die for me alone. In John 20 verse 21, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father had sent me, even so I am sending you. You need to respond to the Master's call to continue his mission, just like Isaiah, by saying, Lord, here am I, send me. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B085. This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, 
And may the God of heaven bless you real good. Peace and love to you all.